report. I'm Amy Goodman with Juan Gonzalez. Well, the Gulf nation of Bahrain has announced that 47 medical workers who treated pro-democracy protesters during the nation's uprising will be tried before a military court. Some could face the death penalty for providing medical assistance to protesters. The charges against 23 doctors and 24 nurses include, quote, promoting efforts to bring down the government and harming the public by spreading false news. Bahrain is a key U.S. ally in the Middle East, hosting the U.S. Navy's Fifth Fleet. Among the doctors facing charges is Ali al akri a prominent physician who was arrested during a military raid at the, his hospital in the capital city of Manama. Uh, on March 17th. His wife was also arrested and beaten under custody. She recently spoke to Al Jazeera. Actually, I'm very afraid because I don't know uh, uh, anything about him. Even his place, I don't know where is he. Uh, his lawyers cannot contact him. And uh, this one day beating that I received, I think he received more and more. Uh, because he's there uh, now uh, one and a half month with them. And uh, I don't know what's his. Uh, I don't know what's the kind of uh, things that he is faced there with them. Human rights groups say the arrests are part of a campaign of intimidation that runs directly counter to the Geneva Convention, which guarantees medical care to people wounded in conflict. The Independent of London reports one doctor, an intensive care specialist, was held after she was photographed weeping over a dead protester. Another was arrested while operating on a patient. For more, we turn to Richard Solom of Physicians for Human Rights, who is joining us from Boston. He just came back from Bahrain, where he documented the situation there. He's co-authored a report called Do No Harm, a call for Bahrain to end systematic attacks on doctors and patients. Welcome to Democracy Now! Uh, Richard Solom, tell us what you found there. Thank you, Amy. Uh, Physicians for Human Rights uh, just returned uh, several weeks ago from Bahrain, where we were investigating uh, allegations of violations of human rights as well as uh, medical neutrality. And what we found was very disturbing. Uh, after speaking with uh, nearly 50 eyewitnesses, patients at Salamania Hospital, uh, physicians, nurses, uh, medical care uh, personnel, including x-ray technicians, medics, et cetera, we came to uh, a conclusion that the government authorities are systematically targeting uh, these medical personnel. Uh, for merely exercising uh, their neutral ethical responsibility of providing uh, care to uh, civilian protesters who were injured by government authorities uh, during the protests over the past couple of months. And your report indicates that there, these are not only uh, cases where people were arrested in hospitals, but that where actually security forces went to their homes in the middle of the night and just grabbed them and carted them off to jail? Mm -hmm. Correct. It's a, it's a disturbing pattern that we found, and uh, the word arrest is actually a euphemism uh, because what the government security forces are, do, are doing are actually uh, abducting these physicians and medical personnel from the middle of, in the middle of the night from their homes in front of their children, literally dragging them uh, from their beds, uh, handcuffing them, blindfolding them, and disappearing them. Uh, uh, Dr. al -Akri and uh, his wife, for example, have been interrogated. Dr. al uh, is still missing. He's facing these, um, these seemingly bogus charges. Uh, he is a highly respected physician uh, who, in our opinion, has done his ethical duty uh, of treating uh, civilians. And th these charges uh, that the government has against these medical personnel are, are, are uh, unfathomable. Uh, you have described that these doctors and nurses have some been taken as they were treating patients. Can you talk about what kind of pressure the U.S. can bring? I mean, this is a close ally of the United States, both Saudi Arabia that moved into Bahrain to attack the protesters and Bahrain itself. It is the home of the U.S. Navy Fifth Fleet. You're absolutely right, Amy. Uh, we documented cases where literally the security forces inside the hospital, you have to remember that the entire Salmania hospital is completely militarized. Uh, there are tanks out in front. Uh, there are uh, police and uh, Bahraini defense forces on every floor of the, of the hospital. Uh, they're carrying assault rifles. Many of them are wearing black masks to hide their identity. 
Uh, we were, when we tried to visit the hospital, we were detained um, uh, and escorted out uh, by the military an hour later. <clears throat> they wouldn't uh, let us visit this hospital. And as you said, uh, some physicians were literally dragged out of the operating room when they were performing surgery uh, by these government security forces. The United States plays a critical uh, role, or can play a critical role, in the sense that uh, you know the government, the Obama administration, and Secretary of State Clinton need to speak out forcefully on this issue. Now, have you you've raised questions as to whether these are violations of uh, any international treaties or Geneva Conventions? Well, uh, we term them violations of medical neutrality. Medical neutrality is, has foundations in the Geneva Convention or the laws of war, uh, as well as in human rights law, uh, as well as in uh, medical ethics, uh, for example, principles uh, laid down by the World Medical Association. Uh, the Bahrain government has signed on to every major human rights uh, treaty. They have a responsibility to uphold uh, these, uh, their treaty obligations, even though there is a state of emergency that's been declared and therefore certain rights um, uh, can be uh, postponed, there are certain, certain non-derogable rights uh, which they must honor. For example, the right to life, the right to be free from torture. And uh, we documented uh, with forensic evidence uh, deaths in custody due to torture. Uh, we documented uh, you know, severe abuse, uh, including torture, of patients inside the hospital. And why we call it torture is in, in addition to the uh, severe physical and mental abuse uh, paid upon these patients who were uh, in the hospital, they were uh, forced to uh, make false confessions. For example, that they uh, were instructed by Iranian uh, government uh, to uh, lead these protests to carry weapons, that they received military training from Iran. Uh, and these uh, types of, of confessions, which were apparently videotaped by the security forces inside the hospital, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing uh, some of these uh, forced confessions uh, on television. Um, Richard Solom, has Physicians for Human Rights ever seen a crackdown like this on doctors and nurses before? I mean, you're talking about a country, Bahrain, that's contributed troops to uh, the war in Iraq and Afghanistan uh, with the United States, um, signed a free trade agreement with the United States, um, is closely allied at every level with the United <clears throat> States. What? How is Bahrain, the government, justifying this, and what is the U.S. government saying? Well, the, uh, the Bahrain government is not justifying it. They're um, actually uh, strenuously, uh, you know, opposing and, and these 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 allegations by organizations like Physicians for Human Rights, Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch. We have all done reporting over the past several months and have come to very similar conclusions that the government is systematically targeting uh, medical personnel and civil society leaders. Um, the in my 20 years of looking uh, at pr uh, violations of medical neutrality and human rights uh, during times of war and civil war, I personally have never seen uh, such widespread and systematic targeting of physicians, such egregious violations of the principle of medical neutrality. I've recently been in uh, Bangkok last year during the red shirt protests uh, in where a hospital was stormed. Uh, I covered the situation in Sri Lanka at the end of that civil war. I covered the you know, collapse of the health care system in Zimbabwe uh, in 2008. Uh, none of this compares to the situation going on in Bahrain, and it makes it especially important for the United States uh, to come out and, and speak about the atrocities that are being committed by their ally, uh, the government of Bahrain. And in the, during the time that you were there, was there any sense that the repression was subsiding since the arrival uh, or since the first days of the arrival of the Saudi troops, or is it actually increasing? And do you have any indication from the U.S. government that it is going to uh, raise the issue of these nurses and doctors and uh, systematic attacks on the medical profession there? <clears throat> Uh, since the Saudi troops uh, arrived in Bahrain and crossed over the causeway into um, that small island country in the Persian Gulf, 
in mid-March, um, actually the human rights violations and violations of medical neutrality, targeting of physicians and medical personnel has actually increased. Uh, we receive uh, daily information uh, via email uh, and phone uh, from new families of physicians who have been disappeared. Uh, last week, two more primary health care centers were attacked by government authorities, surrounded uh, by police cars, uh, stormed, and uh, medical personnel abducted uh, from these primary care uh, centers outside the capital, Manama, in Bahrain. Uh, so unfortunately, we actually see these violations ongoing and actually stepping up. Richard Solom, you finally, what are you calling for? Uh, we call on the United States government, uh, first of all, to speak out forcefully against these egregious violations. Um, they do have a close relationship with Bahrain. As I understand it, uh, President Obama just this past Friday made a personal call to King Hamad. I think that that is um, very welcome and it's uh, reassuring, but he needs to publicly state as well of, as Secretary of State Clinton, uh, that they are against these types of egregious violations taking place in, in Bahrain. Uh, secondly, the United uh, Nations Human Rights Council in Geneva, which is meeting this summer, should take up the issue of uh, violations of medical neutrality, which are happening not only in Bahrain, but also in Syria and in Libya. Uh, Very the quickly, has the, American, should... has the American Medical Association weighed in? The AMA has, and other, um, as well as the World Medical Association, strenuously calling on the Bahrain government to respect uh, physicians' ethical responsibility to treat people, um, which is their responsibility. Richard Solomon, we want to thank you for being with us, Deputy Director of Physicians for Human Rights, speaking to us from Boston. He has co-authored the report, Do No Harm, a call for Bahrain to end systematic attacks on doctors and patients. He just recently returned from Bahrain. This is Democracy Now!